Hello everybody, welcome to another uh, special episode of World of Army Men. I know this is technically only the second ever episode, but uh, trust me, these won't be happening often. Today I'm here to show you how the world works, the politics of it, and pretty much just the general gist of things. I'm unmuting everyone right now. I apologize for you the editor. You little asshole, Zach. I apologize for the editor not putting the map in last time. Ooh, yeah, he didn't put the map in. Bad editor. Man, shut up. Would have shown you where the battle took place, but that's fine. You know, I would have been an editor. I would have been a pretty good one, you know? Yeah, but you had to keep plugging your channel in the other videos we recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah you really sometimes that, yeah. you just kind of suck. By I feel like if you would have edited it, you would have plugged your channel like six times during the video. He would have. I know he would have. Do you know what happened in Kansas? <clears throat> oh god. No, Kansas no. balls in your mouth. Oh my god. Can we just mute? can we just kick him or something? We could, yeah. <laughs> we could, yeah, we could. Just deafen and mute him. Uh, let, uh, not this. again. <laughs> yeah, deafen him, though. make him suffer. Uh, I'll just mute him. Oh, he's muted. Just oh, mute, god. just mute. He can't talk. So, uh, we're just gonna start this little, I guess, I will call it a presentation, with the northern continent, where, uh, so far all the drama has been. Uh, not much has happened in the western side of the continent with the Dark Reds and the Neon Pink Republic. That is one hell of a name. They kind of just relax, they don't do much. Neon Pink has the most advanced infantry, but they do not have boats. They are stuck on their island. Islands, sorry. They have multiple. Over here in the eastern side is where we've probably been the closest to a continent-wide war. Well, technically we did achieve that. It's just they ended it like the next uh, next battle. Uh, we had the Golden Armada, White Castle, not the restaurant, trust, and the Cyan Commune, Commune versus the Yellow Republic, the Technocracy of Violet, and the Black Horde. Uh, no, no battles took place on the lower landmass. It was all upper landmass. Uh, the battles took place here and here. The first battle was the first time we've seen tanks introduced into the war. The Golden Armada absolutely steamrolled the three allied nations because none of them sent tanks to that battle. And the White Castle also uh, sent tanks themselves. Nobody told us about it. Oh, wow, Dave. Men of War soldiers are talking in the background. Um, yeah, we're, we're also going to be recording a battle later tonight. That's why I have that open. White Castle and Golden Armada each lost an infantry company apiece. Uh, Technocracy and the Horde, they lost infantry companies. Yellow Republic lost two infantry companies, a third of their army at the time. Then in the second battle of this war... It was two battles, so we call it the two-day war. The Yellow Republic sent tanks and another infantry company um, with their defensive garrison. And the Golden Armada sent tanks, an improved infantry company, which no one has done at this moment. Uh, Cyan also has an infantry coming, coming, so they were they had more numbers than the Yellow Republic. But they each had tanks, so we thought that would balance it out a bit. Turns out it didn't. The Yellow Republic got steamrolled again. And we found out that the Golden Armada sent prototype models of tanks. They, they didn't even send actual tanks to that battle. Just to fuck with them, I guess. I don't know what they were doing. After this battle, the Golden Armada imposed a peace treaty on the Yellow Republic. In exchange for no one ever attacking the Yellow Republic... Otherwise, they'd have to attack the Golden Armada too. The Yellow Republic would give up the northern half of their land and uh, feed half of the Golden Armada's army. And in the words of the World News Network, the Yellow Republic was made their little bitch. Now, in the southern continent, it's much more dramatic, so to speak. Now, first, we had an alliance form between the Greens and the Tans known as FU, stands for Fascist United. That's why we call them Green 
Green Tilly and the Tan Reich. And then later, the Red Empire and the Grey Dynasty, based off of Russia and China, respectively, also joined FU. Now, to mock the fascists, an alliance known as Axis was formed, originally called Brown, because um, the orange leader thought it would be funny to m have the alliance name be their colors mixed. When the purples, that would be my nation, joined, the name was changed to Axis. Only four of the five purple tribes joined the Axis. Uh, the other ones kind of just done nothing. They're just chilling. Now, you can sort of see the setup for everything, that there could be a massive continent-wide war. We somehow managed to avoid it, despite the purple tribes attacking a Grey Dynasty city and taking it and the surrounding land. Uh, this was not a recorded video, but we did do a battle simulation for it. You can ask anyone in the Discord if you really want to prove it. And instead of retaliating, FU did nothing in response outside of planning to attack me. And um, their plans involved something I didn't expect. The Blue Republic would go on to betray the Axis. We didn't know that at the time until recently. And instead, they planned on helping them attack me. Now the Grey Dynasty, um, the Oranges and I all caught wind of the plan. The Grey Dynasty is who told me about it. And we decided to come up with a name for a new alliance known as POG. Now the way POG works is purple, orange, grey. There's no special acronym. It's, it's literally just the nation's colors. And I'm just going to use that battle site as an O. So if the three Pog nations, um, it was looking to be a 3v4 in our favor because we were all three of us very strong nations. And we had half of them split off from the other half. I bragged about this to the Tan, Rep uh, Tan Reich leader and he decided he would be better off helping us. So he also joined Pog. In the Red Empire, He fa they followed suit. So Pog was now pretty much all of the Eastern Continent, along with the technocracy of Violet, because they discovered the Southern Continent, and, by extension, the Yellow Republic as well. Now, with how massive Pog was, it looked undefeatable. And I think the greens and the blues recognize that because FU no longer really exists. Uh, the greens actually have been going through a state of unrest, and we may be seeing a rebellion soon in one of the green cities on this southern isle here. Very cold place. The blues... They're not really doing much at the moment. They're much better off than the Greens. And in the North, we haven't really seen much going on recently. Uh, it does look like the Golden Armada is arming up for God knows what. They do have a lot of new tank divisions that they want to try. Now, after this, well, scaring a world war out of existence, the Purples disbanded Pog. And instead, there is no longer a massive alliance. Out of As of this moment, I think all alliances are disbanded. So it's pretty much yeah, a clean Yeah, Yellow Fires aren't officially disbanded. Oh, your alliance is not officially disbanded? Not officially. But unofficially, they don't really work together well. We, ha are. we have not been functioning properly. As such, I am strongly considering I mean, changing the membership entirely, if not just dismantling the faction. That's fair. Um, I did tell. Uh, now, now let's, let's get onto the systems. So the way things have been working is we have different tiers of research. Some of the chart research charts are more complex than others. 
For example, infantry and vehicles have much more stuff to research than all the other ones. The, uh, excuse me. Tiers don't necessarily matter. They just give you better equipment and stuff, but you could still win with inferior equipment. It's not likely, but you could. So don't ever count anyone out. I will never be giving infantry more health. So they will always be as weak and fragile as they have been at the start. They'll just have better weapons. Probably more numbers if people keep building them. Other systems we have is an infrastructure system. Uh, which you can build specialized factories to build stuff quicker. Navy, Air Force. Uh, we have an espionage system. An agriculture system. In which um, your people and soldiers can starve. The only instance in which infantry's health is changed is when they're starving, their health gets halved. And for people, if your people are starving, they have a chance of rev revolting against your leadership. Revolts do have your technology. When they revolt, they are not given lesser equipment. Two reasons for that. They could steal it from a military outpost, which is the excuse I use, and the main reason is because I felt like being an asshole to the players. You do that frequently. I do do that frequently. Maybe it's because I let you guys tank back your actions so many times. Speaking of actions, these leaders get three actions a day. They can use it to research, do certain actions, or just straight up attack. Um, on weekends... They get two more actions to five actions every time you capture and hold an enemy's capital. Remember that hold right there. They have to be in control of that specific capital to receive an extra action point. The moment it is taken, it can be taken back at any point by that nation or taken by another nation at any point. The other nation does not lose an action point for you taking their capital you just gained one. This was me trying to get these guys to kill each other. They're doing a really good job at avoiding that. My brother is the only person to actually go out of his way to slaughter people. And he did a damn good job. He won a war in two days. With just two battles. Completely crushed a nation's army. Made his alliance not want to send more troops to him. Yeah, we totally just abandoned the yellow kind of a dick move but like you know i like having units uh. so the way the greens revolution is most likely going to work is we have the neon greens the light greens and a dark green faction these three factions will be trying to establish hold or leadership hold over the nation of green all nations in the world are completely open to influence and send troops to the side they want to win. Uh, fuck, they could probably just try and conquer green while it's in the middle of a revolution if they felt like it. So the world's going to be looking interesting here with m pretty much no alliances. And really, now that green and blue have gone silent, gray is the main superpower here in the south. With the Golden Armada being the main superpower in the north. It's shaping up to be an interesting world here. I'd like to thank you for watching the video. I hope you have a good day. Fuck you, Kevin. Thanks for watching.